In the late 1970s, director Richard Lester set out to create a compelling drama centered around the Cuban Revolution. The first piece of the puzzle was finding the right lead for the film. After much consideration, Lester approached British actor Sean Cannery, best known for his portrayal of James Bond. Cannery, looking to distance himself from the iconic spy character, agreed to take on the complex role of Robert Dapes, a weary mercenary drawn into the chaos of revolution. For the part of Sara, a fiery revolutionary, Chilean actress Brooke Adams was cast. Her previous roles had impressed Lester, who believed she could bring both strength and vulnerability to the character. To ensure proper chemistry between Connery and Adams, Lester arranged for several rehearsals during which he observed the actors' interactions. Their palpable tension proved they were perfect for these intense roles. The supporting ensemble included Jack Weston as Joe Wills, an American entrepreneur caught up in the conflict. Known for comedic performances, Weston surprised many by delivering a nuanced depiction of desperation and opportunism. Another notable performance came from Hector Elizondo as Colonel Sastro, whose subtlety conveyed the turmoil faced by those torn between loyalty to country and conscience. One significant challenge was capturing accurate accents for the international cast. Dialogue coach Gertrude Mayer worked extensively with the actors, helping them master various English dialects while maintaining authenticity in speech patterns. This effort paid off handsomely, contributing significantly to the overall believability of the storyline. Casting children posed another hurdle, especially since youngsters unfamiliar with acting often struggle on set. Yet after rigorous auditions, two talented kids landed critical parts, Chris Ribello as Louis and Lila Techest as Maria. Both displayed remarkable poise and natural ability, bringing depth and charm to their scenes. As shooting progressed, it became evident that the assembled cast gelled beautifully. Each performer seemed deeply invested in their respective roles, resulting in a powerful cinematic experience. Indeed, the collective talent helped elevate this classic tale of love, betrayal, and political strife against the backdrop of historical change. The director of this classic, Richard Lester, brought his unique vision to Cuba. Known for his work on musicals and comedies, Lester approached this historical drama with a fresh perspective. He drew inspiration from various sources, including the political climate of the time and the allure of Havana's vibrant culture. Lester's style combines elements of realism and humor, often subverting expectations. This blend is evident in Cuba, where serious moments intertwine with lighter ones, creating a more engaging experience for the audience. His inventive camera work also sets the film apart, employing dynamic angles and movements that breathe life into each scene. Collaboration played a significant role in realizing Lester's vision. He worked closely with cinematographer David Watkin, who captured the rich visual texture of pre-revolutionary Cuba. Their partnership resulted in stunning images, immersing viewers in the film's lush settings. The casting process was equally crucial. Lester sought actors who could embody the complexities of their characters while staying true to the story's historical context. Among them were Sean Cannery, playing a British mercenary navigating Cuban politics, and Brooke Adams, portraying a weefly American caught up in revolutionary fervor. By fostering a supportive environment, Lester encouraged authentic performances from his cast. Music held great importance for Lester too. With composer Alex North providing an evocative score, the soundtrack complemented the narrative, further enhancing the overall atmosphere. From its compelling storyline to its memorable visuals and music, Cuba stands out thanks to Richard Lester's distinctive directorial touch. Released in 1979, Cuba is a compelling drama set against the backdrop of the Cuban Revolution. Its enduring qualities include its powerful storytelling, strong performances, and historical significance. You'll soon discover surprising, amusing, and poignant facts about this movie. Directed by Richard Lester, known for his work on Beatles films, Cuba boasts impressive production value and attention to detail. The film features an all-star cast led by Sean Cannery and featuring Brooke Adams, Chris Sarandon, and Jack Weston. One particularly memorable scene occurs when a tense card game unfolds between Cannery's character and a group of revolutionaries. This pivotal moment sheds light on the complex relationships and shifting allegiances during this tumultuous time. Now, we invite you to share your own experiences and recollections related to this captivating movie. Perhaps it sparked an interest in Cuban culture or left a lasting impression through its unforgettable narrative. We would love to hear your stories and personal connections to this classic. Share them with us in the comments section below. The 1979 movie Cuba was a significant production 
known for its impressive set design and challenging filming locations. The film, set in the tumultuous period of the Cuban Revolution, required a high level of historical accuracy and attention to detail in its production. The set design team meticulously recreated 1950s Havana, complete with vintage cars, neon signs, and bustling street scenes. They sourced authentic props and costumes from Cuba and other Latin American countries to ensure historical accuracy. The set was built on a soundstage in Spain, which presented its own set of logistical challenges. The film was shot in various locations, including Madrid, Valencia, and Alicante, which doubled for Havana and other Cuban settings. These locations were chosen for their similarity to Cuba's architecture and landscape. However, filming in these locations presented its own set of challenges, such as language barriers, unfamiliar terrain, and coordinating with local authorities. To overcome these challenges, the production team employed innovative techniques and technologies. They used detailed storyboards and pre-visualization tools to plan each shot, ensuring efficiency and accuracy during filming. They also used cutting-edge special effects, such as rear projection and miniatures, to create realistic crowd scenes and explosions. Despite these challenges, the production team successfully created a captivating and historically accurate portrayal of 1950s Cuba. The movie remains a classic example of meticulous set design, innovative filmmaking techniques, and logistical prowess. In the 1979 movie, Cuba, we delve into the complex world of a group of individuals, each with their own unique stories. The film features an ensemble of talented actors, including Sean Connery, playing the role of Robert Dapes, and Brooke Adams, who portrays Sarah. Sean Connery, born on August 25, 1930, in Edinburgh, Scotland, is a seasoned actor known for his work in various genres. In Cuba, he takes on the character of Robert Dapes, a British diplomat navigating the tumultuous political climate in Cuba. Brooke Adams, born on February 8, 1949, in New York City, is another accomplished actor who brings her talent to the screen in Cuba. As Sarah, she embodies a woman caught up in the chaos of the Cuban Revolution. The movie Cuba, set in the late 1950s, offers a glimpse into the final days of the Batista regime and the early days of the Cuban Revolution. The film explores the lives of various characters, from diplomats to soldiers, as they navigate the complex political landscape of Cuba. Throughout the movie, we see the characters grappling with the challenges of their time, from political upheaval to personal struggles. The film provides a nuanced portrayal of the events leading up to the Cuban Revolution, offering a unique perspective on this important moment in history. Cuba is a classic film that continues to resonate with audiences today. Its talented cast and thoughtful exploration of historical events make it a must-see for anyone interested in this important period in history. Whether you're a fan of historical dramas or simply looking for a compelling story, Cuba is sure to deliver. In the 1979 movie Cuba, the musical score and soundtrack play a significant role in setting the film's tone and atmosphere. The music, composed by Dave Bruzen, is a blend of Cuban rhythms and American jazz, reflecting the cultural fusion portrayed in the movie. Bruzen's score is a rich tapestry of sound, with lively percussion, soulful brass, and catchy melodies. The music complements the narrative, underscoring the film's emotional highs and lows. For instance, during scenes of tension and conflict, the music becomes more intense and discordant. Conversely, during moments of romance and camaraderie, the music softens and becomes more harmonious. The soundtrack also features popular Cuban songs of the era, further enhancing the film's authenticity. These songs, performed by renowned artists like Celia Cruz and Al La Lupe, add a layer of cultural depth to the movie. They also serve as a reminder of the vibrant music scene in Cuba during the 1950s, a time of cultural richness and diversity. Gruzin's approach to composing the score was deeply influenced by his experiences in Cuba. He spent time in Havana, soaking up the local music and culture. This immersion allowed him to create a score that is not only musically impressive, but also culturally sensitive and respectful. The musicians involved in the film's production also played a crucial role in bringing Gruzin's score to life. Many of them were Cuban immigrants who had first-hand knowledge of the island's music. Their contributions added a level of authenticity and depth to the music that would have been difficult to achieve otherwise. In conclusion, the musical score and soundtrack of Cuba are an integral part of the film's appeal. They provide a rich, evocative backdrop to the narrative, enhancing the film's emotional resonance and cultural authenticity. 
The storyline of a certain film shares striking similarities with that of Havana, released in 1990. This movie, simply titled Cuba, features a notable actor, Denholm Elliott, who shared the screen with Sean Cannery in four films, including Cuba. Interestingly, the role of Alexandra was initially offered to Diana Ross, who declined. The film's narrative and the characters' interactions are what make it a classic, leaving a lasting impression on its audience. In the 1979 movie Cuba, one of the most iconic scenes is the airport sequence where Chief of Police, Tony, confronts Robert Daves about his involvement with the revolution. This scene stands out due to its direction, performances, and cinematography. Director Richard Lester skillfully builds tension through the use of close-ups and tight framing, focusing on the character's facial expressions and body language. The camera work is steady, yet the intensity of the scene is palpable, drawing the audience in. Christensen's portrayal of Tony is menacing and powerful, while Cannery's Dapes displays a calm determination. Their contrasting performances create a gripping dynamic, heightening the stakes of the confrontation. Cinematographer David Watkin uses high contrast lighting to enhance the mood, casting deep shadows across the characters' faces. This adds to the scene's intensity, further immersing the audience in the unfolding drama. The impact of this scene extends beyond the film itself. Cannery's character, Dapes, is a symbol of foreign intervention in Cuban affairs, a topic that resonates with audiences even today. The filmmaker's decision to explore this theme adds depth to the scene making it a memorable moment in Cuba. In interviews, Lester has discussed his approach to directing this scene, stating, I wanted to create a sense of danger and uncertainty to make the audience feel as if they were right there in the airport with these characters. Christensen has also commented on his performance, saying, It was a challenging scene to shoot, but I felt it was important to convey Tony's complex motivations and emotions. This iconic scene from Cuba is a testament to the power of thoughtful direction powerful performances, and evocative cinematography. It's a moment that continues to captivate audiences, offering a glimpse into the complexities of foreign intervention and its impact on local communities. In the movie Cuba from 1979, the main character, Fidel Castro, was born into a large family with a Spanish immigrant father and a mother who was a household servant. He had several older siblings from his father's first marriage and younger siblings from his parents' marriage. The historical events of the Cuban Revolution, as portrayed in Cuba, were also depicted in the later Hollywood movie Havana and the earlier film The Godfather Part II. These events were treated again, with the tagline of Havana even mentioning the city with the words Part Heaven Part Hell Pure Havana. Walter Gotel, who played Don Jose Pulido in Cuba, is known for his role as General Gogol in the James Bond film franchise. Interestingly, both Gotel and Sean Cannery the first James Bond appeared in From Russia with Love, but they never worked together in a Bond movie where Gotel played Gogol. Released in 1979, Cuba is a movie that has left a lasting impression on its audiences. The film, directed by Richard Lester, takes place in the midst of the Cuban Revolution and provides a glimpse into the turbulent times of this Caribbean island. The movie resonated with audiences due to its powerful storytelling and historical context. It was released at a time when the memories of the Cuban Revolution were still fresh in the minds of many, making it a relevant and thought-provoking film. The film's exploration of the themes of revolution, politics, and personal sacrifice struck a chord with audiences, leading to its success at the box office. Cuba also had a significant impact on pop culture. The film's portrayal of Cuban music, dance, and culture helped to popularize these elements in Western culture. The movie's soundtrack, featuring traditional Cuban music, was a hit and introduced many to the rich musical heritage of the island. Moreover, the film contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The Cuban Revolution was a significant event in world history, and Cuba provided a platform for audiences to engage with this topic. The film's exploration of the political and social dynamics of the revolution helped to spark conversations and debates about the impact of revolution on society. In conclusion, Cuba is a movie that has had a lasting impact on its audiences and pop culture. Its powerful storytelling, historical context, and exploration of relevant social and cultural themes have made it a classic film that continues to be watched and discussed today. In the late 1970s, an attempt was made to create a Casablanca-style film set against the backdrop of the Cuban Revolution 
and the fall of the Batista regime in 1959. This classic, titled Cuba, was not the only movie to draw inspiration from the Hollywood classic, as Cabo Blanco and Far East were also released around the same time. The movie's ending mirrors that of Casablanca, providing a fitting conclusion to this reworking. However, the production of the movie was not without its challenges. Sir Sean Cannery, one of the main actors, had a falling out with the director, Richard Lester. Despite these difficulties, the film was completed and released. At the time of the movie's release, executive producer Dennis O'Dell defended the decision to film in Spain instead of Cuba. He noted that while Cuba had changed significantly in the past 20 years, cities such as Jerez de la Frontera, Cadiz, and Seville, which had heavily influenced Cuban architecture, had remained largely unchanged. This allowed the filmmakers to accurately portray the Cuba of the past, despite filming in a different country. Released in 1979, the movie Cuba garnered a mix of reactions from both critics and audiences. The film, directed by Richard Lester, and starring Sean Cannery brought the complex history of Cuba to the big screen. Critics appreciated the ambitious attempt to portray the turbulent era, with the New Yorker's Pauline Kael praising the film for its sheer scale and energy. However, some reviews were less favorable, with the Washington Post Gary Arnold criticizing the film for its lack of focus and discipline. Despite the mixed reviews, Cuba was nominated for several awards, including a Golden Globe for Best Original Score. This recognition highlights the film's strengths, particularly in its musical score, composed by Lalo Skifford. The film's nominations and awards are a testament to the hard work and dedication of everyone involved in the production. For the cast and crew, these accolades serve as a reminder of their ability to bring compelling stories to life, even in the face of critical scrutiny. Cuba remains a fascinating glimpse into a pivotal moment in history, offering audiences a chance to explore the complexities of a nation in turmoil. The film's enduring legacy is a tribute to the power of storytelling and the enduring allure of the big screen. In the movie Cuba, the character Fidel Castro is mentioned and plays a significant role. He is accompanied by his brother Raul Castro, who is next in line to rule, and has been serving as regent since Fidel's illness in 2006. As they navigate through the story, they drive a distinctive 1957 white Cadillac Series 62 convertible, adding to the film's classic atmosphere. The choice of vehicle not only reflects the time period, but also adds a touch of style and elegance to their presence. The relationship between the two brothers is central to the plot with Raoul's role as regent highlighting the importance of family and loyalty in their world. The movie Cuba explores the complex dynamics of power and leadership, offering a glimpse into the lives of these two influential figures. During the filming of Cuba in 1979, there were many memorable moments that showcased the dedication and camaraderie of the cast and crew. For instance, the film star, Sean Cannery, was known for his generosity. He often invited the entire crew to join him for dinner, creating a warm and friendly atmosphere on set. The movie's director, Richard Lester, had a unique approach to filmmaking. He encouraged improvisation and often changed scenes at the last minute, keeping the actors on their toes. This led to some lively and unpredictable moments on set, which ultimately added to the film's charm. One of the most challenging scenes in the movie involved a massive explosion. The special effects team spent weeks preparing for this scene but when the time came to film it, they faced an unexpected problem. The explosion was so powerful that it shattered windows in nearby buildings. Fortunately, the team was able to quickly adjust their plans and film the scene safely. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew remained dedicated to the project. They worked long hours in the hot Cuban sun, but their passion for the film never wavered. The result is a classic movie that has stood the test of time, offering a fascinating glimpse into a pivotal moment in history. In a unique approach, the director of Cuba, Richard Lester, described the film as a political story where politics are never discussed, and a love story with no mention of love. Despite being unable to film in Cuba, the movie was shot in Spain, standing in for the Caribbean island nation. Famous for his role as James Bond, Sean Cannery starred in this film, and Spain also doubled for Cuba in the Bond movie Die Another Day. Interestingly, the characters Gutman and Miss Wonderly from The Maltese Falcon, and the name Dapes, an anagram for Spade, the lead character in that film, all have connections to Cuba. This classic, set in a politically charged atmosphere, weaves together intriguing elements, inviting viewers to explore beyond the surface. The film's ability to create an engaging narrative 
while avoiding direct discussions on politics or love is a true testament to Lester's storytelling prowess. Released in 1979, Cuba is a classic film that has left a lasting impact on the world of cinema. The movie, directed by Richard Lester, takes place in the late 1950s and tells the story of a British couple who become embroiled in the political turmoil of Cuba during the revolution. The film is known for its star-studded cast, including Sean Cannery, Brooke Adams, and Chris Sarandon. But beyond its star power, Cuba is also notable for its exploration of complex political themes and its vivid depiction of life in Cuba during a time of great upheaval. Cuba has had a significant influence on future filmmaking, particularly in the way it tackles political subject matter. The film's nuanced portrayal of the Cuban Revolution has inspired other filmmakers to tackle similarly complex topics in their own work. Moreover, Cuba has inspired a number of subsequent films and TV shows that explore similar themes or settings. For example, the 1990 film The Godfather Part III features a storyline that takes place in Cuba, and the popular TV show Miami Vice often depicted the city's Cuban community and the ongoing political tensions between the United States and Cuba. Overall, Cuba remains a classic film that has left a lasting legacy in the world of cinema. Its exploration of political themes and its vivid depiction of life in Cuba have inspired countless other filmmakers and continue to resonate with audiences today. In the world of cinema, films often elicit a range of reactions from audiences and governments alike. Take, for instance, the movie simply referred to as Cuba here. This film, which features Sir Sean Cannery and Brooke Adams, faced opposition from the Cuban embassy in Belgrade during the mid-1980s. The embassy claimed that the movie offended the Cuban revolution and people, leading to its removal from television screens in Belgium. Interestingly, this wasn't the first time Sir Sean Cannery found himself in such a situation. In the Anderson Tapes and Murder on the Orient Express, he worked alongside Martin Balsam. These films, too, may have sparked diverse reactions, much like Cuba. Meanwhile, in a separate incident, the Egyptian embassy followed suit, protesting against the portrayal of Egyptians in Cuba as people who bend to foreign invaders. This led to the replacement of Cuba with Caesar and Cleopatra in the broadcast schedule. In the end, the film's journey, much like the histories of the countries it depicts, is a complex tapestry of reactions and responses. In the poster for this classic, Sean Cannery is prominently featured with a black pistol while standing next to a woman. Surrounding them are images of women in bikinis and various action scenes reminiscent of the James Bond films that Cannery was known for. This movie, simply titled Cuba, was produced by United Artists, the same studio responsible for the Bond franchise. Despite its production, Cuba faced controversy in certain South American governments due to its perceived pro-Castro stance. Interestingly, the character played by Tony Matthews, who bears a resemblance to Fidel Castro, was actually voiced by another British actor named Joss Acklin. These intriguing details add depth to understanding both the production and reception of this historical drama. In the creation of this classic, Director Richard Lester drew inspiration from a conversation about influential leaders, leading him to consider Fidel Castro and the film Casablanca. The result was Cuba. The movie opens in 1959 Havana, setting the stage for its story. Sean Connery, known for his role as James Bond, appears in Cuba alongside Denholm Elliott, making it their third of four films together, including Robin and Marion, A Bridge Too Far, and Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Their camaraderie adds depth to this production. In the film Cuba, Sir Sean Cannery stars alongside Denholm Elliott, a duo who had previously worked together in Robin and Marion and Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Interestingly, Cannery also shared the screen with David Rappaport in Time Bandits, demonstrating his versatility as an actor. On the political front, Fidel Castro held significant positions of power in Cuba during the production of this movie. He served as the Prime Minister from 1959 to 1976, and then transitioned to the role of President, which he maintained until 2008. The movie Cuba was not just a showcase for talented actors, but also a reflection of the times, with real-life political figures and events shaping its narrative. The film's ability to weave together complex themes and engaging performances has made it a classic in its own right. Have you ever seen the 1979 movie Cuba? This classic film, directed by Richard Lester, takes us back in time to the eve of the Cuban Revolution. If you have watched it, you might recall the intense portrayal of the political climate 
and the captivating performances of its stars, such as Sean Cannery and Brooke Adams. The movie Cuba is not just a historical drama, it's a rich tapestry that explores the human side of a complex and significant event. The film might have left a lasting impression on you, as it did for many others. It resonates with audiences even today, offering a glimpse into the intriguing world of Cuban history and culture. Did this movie inspire you to learn more about Cuban history or cinema? Or perhaps it sparked a conversation about politics and revolutions. Whatever your experience, we would love to hear your stories. Share your memories and thoughts about Cuba with us. Let's engage in a lively discussion about this classic film and its impact on our lives. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. We can't wait to hear.